Hey fellow tacticians, be sure to like this video and subscribe and ring that little notification bell. That supports this channel's conservative content, which is good for me, good for you, good for America, but really bad for the dark cyber overlords at YouTube. Hey, where are you going, champ? Slugger? Hey, cowboy! Where are you going? Where are you going? I'm going out! Hey everybody, it's Caleb here, and I am driving back from Whataburger because Montgomery has one of those now. I could not be more stoked. I am absolutely thrilled about this. Mm, so good. And, uh, you know, you're welcome, Montgomery. I, I put a lot of work and effort into it. I'm the one that really brought Whataburger to Montgomery. I think that everybody should be thanking me for that because I, I launched a two-year campaign to bring it to the capital city. I was very enthusiastic about it because I love Whataburger so much. I hate that it used to be in East Chase and left, and now it's back in East Chase again. Now, all joking aside, I think we all know that my campaign probably didn't have very much to do, if anything, with the decision to bring Whataburger to Montgomery. But it actually made me think of something that I was reading last night in the Gospel of Matthew. And in that, Jesus talks about what it really means. He's not presenting a new law. He's actually talking about an old law of Moses. To love God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, and with all of your mind. Now, the thing is, I really love Whataburger. But that really all comes from the heart, or more appropriately, the belly. I do have a passion for it, but that's just because I like the food. I mean, it doesn't really go any deeper than that. I just kind of love the burger. But did you know that in the original Hebrew, that love means to give? And so the truth is, you can't actually love a hamburger if you're using the Hebrew language. Because what love means is to give. And the hamburger can give to you, in a sense, because you're eating it and it provides nourishment, but you can't give to the hamburger. The hamburger's an inanimate object. And so I think that sometimes we as English speakers, our use of the word love sometimes doesn't exactly convey what the scripture means when it says love, because it means it in the very specific context of, of something that is done for somebody else. And that's not really something that you get from the English version of the word. And we understand that in the Greek, the highest form of love, because there's five different terms used for love in Greek, the highest one is agape, which is the highest godlike form of love. It's the perfected version of love where you are willing to sacrifice for the other person. And so, in both of these instances, there's a much broader understanding of what it means to love something or someone. I say that I love Whataburger, but if we're talking about it in the biblical sense, if we're talking about it in the language of Hebrew or Greek, I can't love Whataburger. That's not how love works, because it conveys something much stronger and deeper than that. And I was thinking when I, I thought about those three aspects of what it means to love God, where Jesus says we're supposed to love him with all our heart, with all our soul, and with all our mind. Frankly, I think I'm pretty good at loving God with my mind. I'm not saying that I've perfected it, and I don't think any human being can love God with the finite mind that, that doesn't understand every aspect of everything like God does, because he's all-knowing. But I think it's important that Jesus points all these three things out. He's not just making a point about loving God with the whole self, even though that message is there too. He's saying that these things specifically contribute to loving God in a certain way. And what he means by that is, think about it. To love God with all of your heart means to have a passion for him. Kind of the love that I was talking about with, with Whataburger, now in, in a much more serious way. But that you should love God in the way that you desire a person that you really like, or a person that you really like to be around, that there should be an excitement, there should be a desire to be in God's presence, to worship Him, and to obey Him. Somebody that only loves God with their heart, though, they're quickly going to be drawn into some kind of emotionalism, where they might love an aspect of God, but really they kind of mold God into the thing that they want. Because if you don't have the other two parts, it's very easy to make an idol of God and make God just like you. And so what happens is they, the people that love God with their heart, but just their heart, 
they say that they love God, but they really just kind of love the image of God, and they sort of make God into a lovable thing without accepting the aspects that might be more difficult to understand or you might need to use your soul to love. Then there's the aspect of the soul. People that only love God with their soul are quickly drawn into mysticism. They wind up just kind of chasing emotional highs and trying to constantly do new things because that's what makes them feel more spiritual. They're not actually chasing the real God, they're chasing the experience and the idea of God without actually getting into the other parts of it. And then this is the one that I have to worry about more than the other two. For somebody that only loves God with their mind, God becomes a thing to be understood or a subject to study. And that becomes a problem because they just look at God as a, a subject matter to master, like biology or astronomy or something like that. But God is not just a subject to master, he is a master to be subject to. And that's a very different thing. Loving God only with your mind just means that you know God academically, and that's just not enough. That's not what God actually called us to be. But see, when you love God the way Jesus instructs us, with all of your heart, with all of your soul, and with all of your mind, then God won't just be a religious experience. He won't just be a thing that you can have strong affection for, and he won't just be a topic of study to understand. You can have a personal relationship with him just the way Jesus did, and if we want to understand how to love God the way Jesus did, we don't need to look any further than his life. Ever wonder where Superman gets his incredible powers? Some people say it's the yellow son of Earth, but I think it's because he subscribes to this channel and likes my videos. Now, I'm not saying that if you subscribe to my channel you'll necessarily wake up tomorrow as a super strong, nearly invincible alien, but it definitely doesn't hurt your chances.